Hello and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. So today we are going to do another episode in, in Let's Test series. And today uh, what I'm going to show to you is a TDD kata called Roman numerals. My purpose today is not to finish the kata. I only want to do enough of it so I can introduce it to you and perhaps uh, raise a spark of interest so that you can do as your home assignment. You can say uh, pick the kata and, do, uh, and kind of finish it. And then let me know that uh, if, if you have done so in the comment section, because always interested to get a little bit of feedback. Uh, first, before we dive into the topic, uh, why katas? What is a TDD kata? Well, do you know martial arts kata? Uh, in, in the kata you are practicing a series of movements, uh, and uh, it's not directly applicable to real life. So if, if you are a kata master in karate, and then you go on, on the streets or UFC ring and then you try to apply the perfect kata, uh, you will get your ass kicked very badly. But the kata practice is a little bit separate art form. It does have some applicability. Well, you could argue in case of karate, but in, in case of uh, software development, a TDD kata is kind of a right, uh, ni nice, pure, beautiful form which you can practice a lot. And then uh, you can get some ideas that you can apply in a real-world software development. Because in real-world, uh, <clears throat> TDD is often not e very easy. You might encounter, uh, or you will encounter, a lot of things that are just not pure functions. There will be databases and perhaps even files. There will be integrations to other systems. You will need to apply some mocks. So, but but uh, doing a little bit of TDD kata practice will uh, give you a nice idea what we are looking for and how the TDD works and, and how it can work in its most optimal form. And then uh, with that wisdom and knowledge, then you can go to real world projects and see when it applies and when it doesn't apply and uh, kind of have that idea of where you are wanting to head if you apply it, okay? So uh, many people say that you should start your mornings with a 30 minute of kata practice before you start your work day. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Do that for two weeks and you will be a, a pretty, pretty kind of knowledgeable TDD and, and test master. I'm, I'm actually being quite honest with this. So kata practice is uh, when, when, you, uh, when you do it for some time, it will be fun for you. You will get a lot of those aha uh, kind of moments and, and uh, your skills will improve a lot. But at some point you get diminishing returns, so you should stop and start practicing the real-life TDD. By the way, why TDD? Why I'm talking about TDD? Well, test-driven development is the most cost-effective way to get test coverage. Uh, so if you, if you start with tests, you will write test-friendly code and your life will be much better. If you start with the implementation and at some point want to add some tests on top of that, uh, that's called legacy code, and it's going to be horribly untestable or testing unfriendly. So uh, it's it's a little bit different experience. So that's why we do TDD kata today. Let's start. I, I did a long ramble, so let's dive into code. In an earlier episode, I have shown how to set up Java and how to set up Maven in a very kind of rapid way and how to set up JUnit for testing. So this is what I have ended up. I have a VS Code set up with a test that I can run. And this is what you should have as a prerequisite for our today's lesson. And then if you don't have that, just watch a few of my earlier videos and follow the instructions. Uh, or drop some kind of uh, questions in the comment section if you are ha still having some trouble with the basic setup. But I'm assuming you got this far. So what can we do next for the kata? Well, firstly, I want to rename these things. So we have Hello World. Let's rename that as um, Roman numerals kata. Okay. So Roman numerals kata, I want the class and file name to match. So that's okay. And then we have Roman numerals kata test dot Java. Same thing, yeah, all good so far. When we do a test, a few points for a good test. First is that uh, you should name it to be awesome. So the test should imply what you are testing for. So um, I'm going to be testing uh, a function that's going to be, well, I'm going to call it Roman numeralize. So Roman numeralize should return 
valid value for one. Okay, so I'm going to start my testing from one case. Uh, idea for TDD kata for Roman numerals is that we create a function that will uh, accept. Uh, uh, it will accept a kind of a numer numer numeral va numeric value, and uh, we will be returning it uh, converted. So uh, again, you could theoretically uh, figure out which way you want to go. But in this case, I think uh, I, either one is going to be fine. In this case, let's actually let's actually go so that I pass in the Roman numeral value and I want a kind of integer number out from there. So I'm already designing how I want my function to behave. I just decided the name and kind of the structure. So how about uh, we have, uh, uh, again, we could decide if it's an instance function or static function, but I'm going to go with the minimal solution right, right now. So Roman numerals kata dot, we don't have the function yet. So it should be Roman numeralize. I could probably rename it to be to make more sense at some point, but let's go with this for now. So I'm going to pass in uh, I, which in Roman numerals should stand for one. So there I have my assertion. Let's claim result equals whatever the function is giving me. And then I'm going to claim that result equals one, right? Or wrong. Okay. So that's my first happy path scenario. Uh, given Roman numeral i, I expect my function to give me one, right? And right now uh, we are not being even able to compile this because if I if I try to run my test, uh, we don't have that function there. So there's an error. It's red. That's good because in TDD cycle you want to do three things. So first create a test that fails. We just did it. Second, create a test that passes. And th three is refactor step. And that's the awesome step because when you have good test coverage, you can refactor nicely. So uh, it's failing, but it's failing for a bit stupid reason. We don't have this function yet. So now we can create it from here. So we let the test guide our implementation. Uh, I just uh, clicked the kind of yellow button here and said that create the function. And now we have the function. Function is there, but it's not very good function yet. So we have Roman numeralize. It's a stupid name, unfortunately. Then we have a string uh, Roman numeral. And then uh, uh, we want to have a return value that in this case it, it should be int, I think. And uh, my, yeah, Let, let's use some uh, kind of stupid value that's not the right value because I th as I said, it's very important that you run the test so that it fails because then we validate that test is not a liar uh, or kind of false positive. We validate that test might actually work, hopefully. So uh, that checks out through. Uh, I did my first step, the, the uh, test fails because I'm expecting one and I just got a zero. Okay, so let's fix it. Stupidest thing that should work. So I changed that to one and save my code and rerun the test. I could also do it from here. So this will kind of run the test again. Now it succeeds. So that was my first iteration. Fail, pass, refactor. Can we refactor this to be more generic or simplified? Well, not really yet because there's not enough code. So let's uh, put a little bit more code in. I can now kind of reshape my screen to have more space here. So uh, we, we now shape our implementation with our tests. You can probably figure out what my next test is. So let's test with the two. At this point, I would expect two. Always, the test needs to always be correct. If you, if you get the habit of breaking the test, it might stay there and then you have trouble later. So we always want to start with a test that's correct because we don't have tests govern, governing our tests, okay? So uh, only way to break this is to have the implementation be bad and that we can later change, but always start with correct tests. And by the way, always run all the tests. I, I just made a mistake running just one. 
uh, once we have run all the, the whole class we can rerun from here you can see that now one of the tests is okay another one is uh, failing that's good that's step number one then we go to implementation and figure out how to make this pass and it could be really stupid and simple something like this if roman uh, numeral equals uh, let's say it equals one then we return one and i know this hurts your heart a lot but uh, the stupidest implementation for this right now to pass would be something like this if you want it to be more clever you need to write more clever tests our requirements right now say that i returns one and uh, if i put two i's i get a two okay so this should actually work let's see yeah it works unfortunately it's a re very stupid implementation but it works i could also do another one that would simply grab the length of the uh, roman numeral that we get and return that that would also pass right right now but uh, then we need to add more tests to make it fail so i think uh, these are okay parts uh, it gets a little bit boring so probably number three is not going to add a lot here what we could do next is to add uh, some special conditions uh, how about five that would be the next interesting roman numeral or even uh, four let's do five right now as a special case so with five i would expect uh, to get five right okay what can we do now well we we typically put the special case in first and uh, with uh, v i return five and then we could put uh, we could continue this rather stupid looping a bit more so let's do else if yeah if it's uh, i yeah something like that uh, we do need also the final condition It can actually be just an else because I'm doing the stupidest implementation that could work right now. I know this feels a bit bad. This is where the kind of uh, practiced form uh, differs a little bit from your actual professional life. I, I know that probably nobody, no, not one of you would ever write code like this because this uh, hurts even my, my own heart right now. But for TDD, for understanding TDD, this is what we do because this forces you to uh, come up with clever tests clever ways of measuring things so if if you try to kind of be too clever here and think ahead too many steps it, it's not going to be good tdd kata just do the minimal minimal thing so if roman num numeral equals five if it equals uh, i so so if it equals v i and then otherwise we do two so we can then keep on adding more tests i've seen some people actually do one huge test that contains all the possibilities uh, typically that would be not the perfect uh, form of testing but for kind of this kata it would kind of work because otherwise we just end up writing for some time you would probably just end up writing a lot of these something like this is the next one but every time you add a test you are adding more requirements so it will actually work out nicely yeah so I just added one more. So now uh, my three tests are passing and I added one more that's red and you know the drill by now. So I just need to add, add to my implementation. Uh, at some point, we could do a two here and then otherwise it's three. However you like, I think it should pass now. So very rapid iterations. Idea of TDD kata is that you wouldn't spend a lot of time within a round. Idea of TDD altogether is that maximum would be 15 minutes per one round so within that 15 minutes you try to do uh, that red test so test that fails then fix the test with minimal implementation so that you are green and then refactor and then next round next round you get more ideas for the tests while you do this for example what if this is empty or null value what happens uh, then you get the idea how should i actually handle that and then you specify it in a test and make it pass and little by little this gets better 
once you start having a little bit of this test harness, uh, you might start getting bored uh, in this case with this uh, structure. And then we are getting to the fun stuff because I now have the functionality there so I can start playing with other algorithms. You probably remember that I had one kind of, this is, this is so wrong, but still I'm going to do it because when it comes to TDD kata, this is right. This is uh, like academic or just uh, art form uh, exercise. So how can I handle one, two and three nicely? Well, if it's not five, then we return uh, Roman numeral length. As I said, uh, this is rather stupid, not a good implementation, but I, I, I suspect that it would carry me through this round. I can do my refactor round and have tighter code here because of this. It might even in some cases work if I know that there is only i's contained, if only only letter used is i, then this might be one, one way to implement that. But eventually you will probably figure out something better. And as I said, uh, this is where I'm go not going to spoil this for you. I'm just saying that if you have about four or five tests, then you are in a position to start thinking about this. And the only hint I'm ro dropping right now here is that perhaps recursion might work in this case. It will work in many of these cases. So perhaps recursion would help your life a lot. But I'm not going to solve this for you. Let me know in the comment section if you manage to start this and have fun with this or if it's uh, horrible and uh, and uh, just uh, wrong and all the way or if you got as uh, far as me and then some steps ahead and if you found something a satisfactory algorithm to solve this and if you get stuck uh, you can drop comments in the comment section i will be trying to help you then uh, just by nudging with a few ideas you can also spoil yourself by just googling with these keywords TDD, Roman numerals, kata, and you find a lot of solutions. The fun thing is that they, there is a lot of different solutions to do this. So uh, I hope you had fun with this. Uh, I highly recommend if you haven't done this exercise uh, to do a few rounds, not very long rounds, but like 15 to 30 minute rounds of this. So you get the mindset and, and you get where we are going. And these are opti optimal because they are isolated, so it's pure algorithm and that, that supports very nicely TDD. I've sometimes actually used this form, like if, if I was uh, creating an algorithm for, let's say, uh, turn radius in some navigation software, or uh, if I uh, do value added tax calculations, we, we define good test hardness that contains all the pain points that we expect to have. And then we also add, in addition to happy path, we also add a few kind of cases it can fail. And then having that harness in place, we can experiment and refactor quite freely and safely because we can always run the tests and see if the implementation was right. So this stupid practice might actually lead, lead to a lot of happiness or satisfaction in your work. Mm. I think that's it. You know what to do. If, if uh, I've added any value or brought any entertainment for your day, click those buttons, subscribe to my channel, share the link for your friends so that uh, my channel will grow and uh, also your reputation will grow. And uh, if you have some ideas you would like me to handle, also drop some comments in the comment section. Uh, other than that, I think that's enough for today's episode. Uh, see you later. Bye bye.